It's amazing what people throw out. I've found and saved so much over the years and frankly made a decent chunk of change out of it. If the littlest thing goes wrong with a particular product, most just toss it. This is something I've seen too many times. I think the reason it's so common to find good things being thrown out is simply because people like buying new and the whole idea of consuming. It's an addiction for some. This problem is exacerbated when things today just aren't built to last. The average expected lifespan of most products is only a few years. And people have just come to accept it, continuing the endless consumption cycle. But it's not just household products and technology, but even the whole house itself. Just the other day, I was out for a walk around town. On the side of the road was a big skip. So naturally, I went and checked out what was inside. It was mostly filled with uninteresting building supplies, but then I spotted a cordless Dyson vacuum. Some of their vacuums new are around $1,000. This was an older V7 model, but they still sell for around 200 on the used market. When I got home, I noticed it only worked for a second and shut off. You wanna know what the problem was? The filter was clogged. So they threw away a perfect vacuum because the filter was blocked. Now there's a special kind of stupid. Back when I was in high school, they decided to update the computers in the computer lab. Of course, they didn't try and sell or give away the old computers. They just started throwing the old ones in a skip. It's actually illegal where I live to throw e-waste in the bin. It's supposed to be dropped off at a special e-waste center. In the end, they were just handing them to me and a few mates because we were taking them out of the skip. We got all sorts of things, from towers and monitors to MacBooks and brand new SSDs. After a clean and a new OS installed on the computers, we sold them. I reckon we made at least $1,500 to $2,000. That from things heading to landfill. But my old school isn't a one-off. A viewer had the same thing happen. He managed to save over 100 MacBook Airs sending a few over to PC right and I to fix up. Most worked or had very minor issues we could fix. I put it to my viewers to see what awesome things they've saved and got many responses. So I thought I'd share some. The YouTuber, The Ultimate Recycler, mentioned he scored a vintage Commodore Amiga PC. I've just rescued some vintage computer gear that was about to be thrown out. Let me show you what I got. There's a pile on my bench in the shed here. There's a, a pile of stuff up on the deck. Probably going to have some sort of market though. I'm not sure. I have to decide on that soon. However, I'm probably going to eBay the PC either complete or in parts. Next is Nathan from the YouTube channel PCivrite with his favorite find. While it's definitely not the most valuable thing I found in the trash over the years, back in 2009, I picked up a Power Macintosh 5200 and I actually made a YouTube video of it back in 2009 as well. That definitely kickstarted my love for trying to find things cheap and for free, especially on the side of the road. Another viewer saved a Commodore monitor that he found outside a dump. After some repairs, it now gets to live on. JN 2002 found an iPhone XS in a recycling bin and was able to fix it up and sell it. Or this bloke who saved this car from going to scrap. Looks like they've done it up a bit and are having loads of fun driving it around. Now just imagine on a global scale, the amount of things that could have been saved or reused going to landfill or occasionally recycled. This sort of thing gets swept under the mat, away from public view. Now it's important to be realistic. Not everything can or is worth saving, but I feel people should at least try and give or sell it first. Just because you don't see value in it doesn't mean someone else won't. But with the right people buy things, even donation centers can get overwhelmed with the amount of donations. Consuming has become a cultural thing. It's amazing what you can get on the used market because it's so out of fashion and no one really wants it. For example, I've brought solid hardwood furniture that outlived someone else and will outlive me for the same price as a new piece of flat packed chipboard furniture that'll last six months. 
Honestly, I don't see the value in most new things. It's built like garbage, it doesn't last, and really, I don't think it looks that great either. But it likely has a lot to do with advertisements and people trying to keep up with trends. Truth is, trends are an arbitrary thing designed to keep people buying and hooked on consuming. Fashion and design changes constantly, not because it must, but because these companies want to keep making money. They make people feel as though they're not good enough or missing out by not following them. The solution is therefore pretty simple. Stop trying to keep up with trends. Buy what you like, but buy something that will actually last. That's easy to say for something like furniture, but for technology, it's more complex. As even if you want to keep using it, it can be programmed to become obsolete or not let you repair it. But the most important thing to take away from this video is that companies see you as a dollar sign, not necessarily a person. They don't have your best interests at heart, they want to make money. So consider the real cost of consumerism. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, consider subscribing and check out the playlist on tech that's not what it seems. If you're looking for any used devices, be sure to check out my online store, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video, and I'll catch you guys next time.